uh, roughly one-tenth of the energy we burn as primary energy ends up as useful energy. Now, thermodynamics means that we can't convert all of that into useful energy, but we can certainly massively improve the ratio. So whatever we do, whether we look at a figure like this in which we're trying to reduce emissions from road transportation, we can divide it up into fuel consumption. That means the efficiency with which we use the energy and carbon footprint of the fuel that we're using. So the first is fuel consumption, energy efficiency in terms of taking primary energy and putting it into the actual transport mechanism. There the big wins lie in terms of engine efficiency, weight reduction, and design, design including reducing air drag, air drag for uh, road vehicles and for air uh, vehicles as well. According to our ideas now, we have three uh, kind of uh, specific uh, benchmarks in the new transport policy. One of them is certainly the decarbonization. But we also have to deal with the uh, other issue, which is market, uh, internal market. And uh, without a properly functioning internal market, uh, we cannot talk about uh, efficient and uh, proper transport uh, policy and uh, proper transport development in place, being in place. And uh, the third issue is infrastructure. Uh, transport, as I told you, is a rather complex activity where infrastructure, the different modes of transport, the knots, which are ensuring the transshipment of goods and passengers between the different modes of transport, are to be at the right place at the right time. Looking at CO2, it's also been decreased uh, by 36% over the last 30 years by the commercial uh, road transport industry. Um, so something has been done. What can we do uh, in the future to increase this uh, even further? Sultan mentioned that we had to get up to close to 100% in the next, uh, let's say, uh, 40, 50 years. So of course that's something that uh, we would like to contribute with. The uh, International Road Transport Union has adopted a resolution that we voluntarily commit to reduce uh, CO2 by 30% in 2030. So that combined with the 30, uh, 36% that we achieved, we are approaching some figures that, uh, that matter. Uh, one of the reasons why we have transport growth on the scale we do is because, um, if I'm being blunt, and it's not a very, very popular thing to say, but I think it's worth saying, transport is basically too cheap we don't internalise the external costs of transport. People don't actually pay for what transport costs. In practical terms, what it means is that the demand for transport um, constantly rise, governments are constantly under pressure to find new infrastructure, which in itself then stimulates new demand. So levels of transport continue to rise. If we're serious about um, reducing emissions, one of the first things we've got to do is to start to price properly so we can actually um, start to manage demand more effectively and make sure that, that um, people actually pay uh, the proper cost of what their journey is incurring. We have in place a major European programme to harmonise and to go some way towards unifying the airspace. It's called the Single European Sky and it, is, um, it has achieved the, uh, the political backing, the legal framework it needs. We're, we're moving into the implementation phase and things, frankly, are not moving quickly enough. There, there are enormous savings to be made on all sides in terms of money, in terms of delay, and in terms of environmental impact. Um, and the, uh, the sooner we begin to see benefits flowing from the single sky, the better. Tax breaks for aviation. Why is there a VAT tax break for, for uh, aviation tickets? Why don't we pay for kerosene taxes? Um, biofuels, and a really important debate. Are we going to include indirect land use change? The fact that if you grow more biofuels, some people will move and remove for, uh, forests, for example, in order to still grow their crops. 
Do we include that in the biofuels regulation, yes or no? That will be a key decision to be made in the next year, and it will decide about the question if biofuels actually become sustainable and do something good for the environment and the climate or not. Um, I, I could go on and on. Um, if you want to really push forward behavioral change, then make the car pay what it does in damage to the environment. So will we have higher fuel prices, yes or no? Um, take the discussion, upcoming discussion on the EU budget and the structural cohesion funds. Will the billion spent by, on European taxpayers' money actually spent in a climate-proof way? So help the infrastructure that is um, connected to the lowest CO2 emissions. Mm -hmm.